Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, I am Lisa Edens. I am the program coordinator for the Colorado Alliance for Environmental Education. And um, if you're not familiar with CAEE, we are a network of environmental educated, education providers who are working together to advance environmental education in Colorado uh, by fostering collaboration, mobilizing support, and driving excellence. And so one way that we drive excellence is um, through our monthly webinar series. So thanks for joining in our, our third one of 2018 already. Um, a couple housekeeping things. Um, I am recording the webinar, so um, I'll send a link to that out when we're done here, along with resources that I'm going to mention throughout the webinar today. Um, also, if you want to ask a question, um, please do use the, I think the chat function for you is at the bottom of the screen. Um, and you can chat those in at any time and, and I'll hopefully see them as I go along here. Um, let's see. And then after the webinar, I'll also be sending out an evaluation if you have a few minutes um, to take that. That would be great. All right. Well, I think... We just have a couple people on, but um, I wanted to just get an idea of whether you're coming from a career seeker perspective or a career influencer perspective, meaning that you work with youth and are hoping to get some resources today that will help you um, in supporting them. So I'll give it maybe a couple more seconds, maybe 10 more seconds. And we'll see. All right, everybody's in. <laughs> Let's see. So it looks like everyone's a career influencer. So that um, certainly helps me think about how I'm going to frame the rest of the hour here. And um, I hope I am able to share a lot of resources that you guys can pass along um, with your youth throughout the, the next hour. All right. Let's see if we can get this to advance. Awesome. Okay, so let's start off. What are we talking about when we're talking about a career pathway? Um, well, specifically, we're talking about the education, training, and support services needed to help people get careers. Um, and so our goal is to make things easier to help students and potential students make or um, build their careers. Sorry, my mouse is being a little. Um, and specifically for natural resources, um, we're finding that fewer young people are growing up learning to hunt, fish, hike, camp, and just generally um, with a love of the outdoors. And um, we also know that about 11,000 people each year retire annually in Colorado from natural resource positions. So there's real concern over who is going to be the ones to protect me maintain and enhance these lands, not only as our voters and, and just good citizens, but as um, our professionals who are really in charge of um, our natural resources. A little bit of background. Um, this, um, what we're finding from a lot of environmental and recreation-based groups is that they're struggling to guide youth into natural resource careers. Um, one example is the, the youth corps across Colorado. Um, they have um, young adults that are working outside and are developing a passion and interest and skills in land management and other um, natural resources, but they're really not able to make that jump into a long-term career. Um, and at the same time, we're hearing from land management agencies that they need better qualified candidates, um, and specifically those from non-traditional backgrounds. So somehow these, this pool of candidates isn't really matching up with what the land management agencies are seeking. And this is similar with higher education, that they're just having a difficulty attracting students, especially from non-traditional backgrounds. Um, so, why is this all important? Um, well, this is a pyramid that I took from um, the Urban Wilderness Canoe Adventure um, of the National Park Service, but um, I really thought that it was helpful in showing how our youth kind of rise through the pipeline into a career. 
So at the bottom, you can see we've got schools and youth organizations, neighborhoods, and others. And um, we have a lot of experiences that we're offering for our youth in the environment and the outdoors and natural resources. And kind of as you move up the pyramid, um, you know, some may participate in a second experience and the even smaller amount might continue on to multi-day experiences or camps. And then even a smaller subset um, might pursue an internship or a summer job. And then finally, you know, we've got a very small amount um, actually going into a career in natural resources. And so how can we better capitalize on all of these spark experiences in the rest of the pyramid to drive more youth um, up, up the pyramid, so to speak, into um, those careers? So I want to give a brief background about the Careers in Natural Resources initiative. Um, this initiative is one that started about Boy, I think it's been about five years ago now, back in 2012 even. Um, and it started with a conversation um, that came from the Colorado Youth Corps. Again, just noting that their um, alumni were really not able to get a job in the field, a long-term sustainable job. And so um, we, CAE, began partnering with the Colorado Youth Corps Association um, to lead this effort to get more kids um, interested in the outdoors and in natural resource careers. Um, and so it started back with a summit back in 2012. And at that summit, they came up with this vision, which was to work collaboratively to create more pathways to enable all young adults to be educated, prepared, and qualified to enter and maintain professional, sustainable natural resource careers. And since then, um, we've had over 350 people from more than 100 organizations participate in the initiative in one way or the other. Um, we've had representatives from all levels of government agencies, um, nonprofits, all levels of education, parents, and just concerned citizens. And um, our three main goals, our working goals since then, have been um, first to increase awareness, uh, second, to reduce barriers, and three, to increase access to um, resources. And I'm going to talk about these all more in depth here just in a minute. So what are we talking about again when we're talking about this pipeline or this pathway to a career? Well, for career seekers, we're talking about um, the awareness, the knowledge piece, getting them the experience and education they need, then specific career information, and then hopefully launching them into that first entry level job. And then for you as career influencers, it's a little bit different. Um, we start with an awareness. Um, second is investment. So um, that could be investment of, of money or time. So um, today, for example, I appreciate your investment in time and just participating in this, in this hour to learn about these resources. So you're already kind of on the second box here. Um, and then pursuing more training and resources to actively coach candidates and really become a mentor, um, a, you know, a more active mentor in their lives. So diving into a little bit more about what it means to be a career influencer. Um, so today we're hoping to give you um, some of the information and resources that we have so that you better understand the full scope of opportunities available for your youth, um, some of the skills and background required um, for different jobs, um, the economic benefit, um, and then finally, you know, what is the pathway? How do they get there? Um, so we'll talk a little bit about these in greater detail. So let's start with raising awareness. Um, at this level, we're talking about anywhere from early childhood, preschool age kids, all the way through um, high school. And during this whole period, a big goal is just exposure to natural resource careers. Um, speaking from personal experience, I have a seven-year-old boy and um, many of him and his friends, you know, want to be firefighters and astronauts and all those cool things that they see on, on TV and around them. And we want to do the same thing for natural resources. We want to get them exposed to those um, different professions, those um, 
scientists and entomologists and park rangers and and um, water quality personnel, um, just so that they can start seeing them in the community around them. Um, another part piece of that is just knowledge about the specifically about the variety of careers, um, which I'll talk again about in a little bit. But um, there's a whole breadth and diversity of careers out there. And so um, just helping them get that increased knowledge about what that is, is another goal. Um, and then again, what courses are going to help start them on the right path? Um, just we know that um, especially colleges and jobs are getting more competitive. And so how can we help them start thinking of um, these sorts of things in advance? And then finally, um, what volunteer job shadowing and internship opportunities are available? So some of the general strategies, first I'm going to talk a little bit about general strategies, and then I'm going to show some specific examples. But generally, um, one of the strategies is simply to put a career lens on the topic you're teaching. So, for example, if you're an educator at the Butterf Butterfly Pavilion and you're teaching um, youth about butterflies and, um, you know, saying something about what it means to be an entomologist or what you would do day to day, it could just be a very short piece of a bigger program and that might connect with somebody. Um, so you can do this, you know, across any field. Um, the second is to invite speakers and specifically those are, that are culturally representative of your audience. So um, again, inviting some professionals in uniform to come in and, and talk about the cool things that are part of their jobs can be really impactful for youth. Um, the next three I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically on um, participate in career fairs, offer programs specific to natural resource careers, and showcase your organization or agency's own staff and their career pathways. So let me share a little bit more detail about those. Um, so we as CAEE, we've, um, and through the Careers and Natural Resources Initiative, have developed a few um, tools that, that I'm gonna be passing on to you after the webinar um, to hopefully help you. Um, one is this Paths of Engagement handout. And it's, a, it's really a two-pager. I only have a screenshot of the first page. But um, it's something that you could hand to your youth and um, just bullet some of the places where they can kind of connect at different levels. So there's a whole host of programs, obviously, that help youth experience and explore the outdoors. Um, so these are just some ideas if, if you run a program and maybe they're aging out or maybe um, you can showcase one of these other examples as um, another place where they can continue to build their love for the outdoors and their skills. There's also a ton of volunteer opportunities across numerous fields. Um, professional societies are a great one that I don't think our youth are, are making enough use of. Um, they typically have networking events, a jobs board, they sometimes even have mentorship programs, and again you can find those across all different professions. Um, on the back side of this, which I don't have shown, but is um, a list of um, paid internships and also paid jobs, places that hire youth as young as 14 or 16 years old. Um, so if they don't have the luxury of volunteering that they could actually get a job in, natural, in a natural resource um, field as young as 14. Um, so that's one of the specific resources that we have. Um, the second that we put together is a career fair toolkit. And again, I'll send the link to this in the follow-up email. But um, basically, a lot of the big districts, um, Douglas County, Adams County, Greeley, um, Denver Public Schools, and um, I'm not sure outside of the metro, but um, they put on eighth grade career fairs that in a matter of four to five, six hours, you'll have thousands of eighth graders. And it's just this great opportunity to have a booth and share um, information about your job and your field. Um, you know, these interactions are kind of the, the quicker interactions, but um, if you've never been to a career fair, we've put together this toolkit. So if you don't know what materials to bring. Um, you can just print out some of the things that we've created, bring some of your own brochures. But I think the most important thing is just showing up because um, these eighth graders are, are going here and they're seeing a lot of tech jobs, a lot of healthcare jobs, and we want to make sure that we have a good representation of natural resource careers 
um, at these job fairs as well. And we've seen through booths that, that they are very attracted to the positions. So that's why I say we need to show up for them and make sure we can give them that information. And then finally here um, would just be to tap into the Careers and Natural Resources Network. So if you're not already on our listserv, um, we try to only send quarterly updates, but those updates contain information on things like the career fair opportunities or um, upcoming meetings. And at those meetings, we've had partners that have made direct connections with one another um, to connect students with um, career opportunities. So um, I would definitely encourage you to um, let me know if you want to become part of that network. And I will happily put you on the list. <laughs> so a couple more specific resources. Um, and this comes from Calwood, which is a residential um, environmental education center up in um, outside of Boulder. And um, they have kind of taken um, some of our foundations and launched it even further, um, they've developed a number of lesson plans specific to different careers. So the one I have showcased here is the wildfire science career lesson plan, but they also have a wildlife management one, a forestry one, and I think they're working on a soils one as well. Um, but they've matched these all to the Colorado State Science Standards and they offer these to their schools and they're, what they're finding is that over 50% of the schools coming up there um, and they're booked through the end of the summer are requesting a career um, program, which is just to me signifies that teachers want these um, lessons for their, for their youth, um, which is great. And I even talked to Angie Busby, the, the person that's put all this together, the other day and they have their first three-day career um, experience for kids coming up I think in the next couple weeks. Um, so I think this is just a great model that we can um, use to, to build our own from and I, I think she'd be happy to share some of these materials um, with you as well but for each lesson plan there's an introduction, it talks a little bit about salary and then there's about 8 to 15 activities that teachers um, in collaboration with the Calwood staff would choose together depending on time to really highlight what a career in that position in that field would look like. So that's one example. The second really cool thing that they're doing up there is career cards. And these are an opportunity to showcase a variety of different jobs in natural resources. And they have created a number of these and laminated them. And what they hope to do is actually create these giant billboard, um, what do you call those, like uh, posters that they would hang up in their hallways. And so as people are lining up or going to the bathroom that they could maybe linger and read about some of these positions more um, on an individual basis. So this one that I thought was really cool is from Crystal with Colorado Parks and Wildlife. She's a video specialist. And what I really like about this one is that it highlights that you don't necessarily have to have a background in a natural science to go into this field. And you can love social media and videography and taking photos and um, have one of the coolest jobs that I know. And um, so again, this is something that you could do at your organization. If you have staff that you could highlight and, and their career paths and what their current jobs are, that might really connect to some of the youth that you work with. Okay, so since we've got awareness, so let's talk a little bit about how we get from that awareness and experience to a career. So our goals here are mostly to reduce barriers to getting that first job, and we know there's a lot of them. Um, so one of the things I want to highlight today, if you haven't seen our how-to guide for pursuing a career in natural resources, um, I will send you this link again after the webinar today, and I'm going to talk for the next um, 10 or 20 minutes about the content in here. It's about 120 pages long. <laughs> So um, it can be a little intimidating and, and tough to kind of crack the cover. So that's why I want to um, do that for us today and let us 
dive into a little bit of the information contained in that so that you can use that to help your youth as well. Um, generally, um, it profiles a variety of jobs and career fields. It includes tips for navigating application and interview processes, and it's specifically a how-to for federal, state, and local jobs. And that's simply because we got a majority of our funding from federal and state agencies, and um, that really directed us kind of in that direction. So again, we're gonna take a little bit deeper dive into what's in this career guide. And um, one question that always comes up, so I'll just answer it before it comes up, is um, are there hard copies of the guide? Um, and the guide mostly lives online because it's constantly being updated um, and printing is, is expensive, but um, we do have some printed copies. So again, if you're interested in actually having a physical guide to, to have with your youth, please let me know and I'll, I'll do my best to get one to you. Um, so some of the things I wanna talk about specifically in the guide are, you know, what types of natural resource careers exist, who hires natural resource professionals, and how to search and apply for positions. So let's take these one at a time. Um, one of the resources that is in the guide, and I will send you as a separate PDF as well, is a series of fact sheets. And our reason for these, putting these together, was to really showcase the breadth and depth and variety of different natural resource jobs across all of the different fields. Um, so let's take a closer look into the Parks and Recreation one. Um, it talks a little bit about what the field of Parks and Rec is, what a professional generally in that field does, and then gives specific job titles at each level um, of jobs, so from entry level all the way through management. And then also the corresponding education and training that you would need in general, again, for that level of position. And again, we tried to use real job titles that I dug out of job announcements and USA job postings and Colorado job postings, um, because I think a lot of times people would think that they know, you know, okay, if I could be a park ranger, I could be um, an environmental educator, but they might not know they could be a visitor use assistant or a playground safety inspector or um, a, a sustainability consultant or community organizer. And so I hope this just kind of opens the eyes up of some of the youth into all of the different possibilities. Um, and so they can start looking at those a little bit more closely. And then at the bottom, you'll see, again, how do I get experience and connect with that community? And I have, we have specific programs and employment that um, capture that field and volunteer opportunities in professional societies. We also try to highlight throughout the guide that you don't have to work in the outdoors to work for the outdoors. So as you all probably know, a lot of natural resource work is done in the office. And um, so someone doesn't necessarily need to want to work outside. And we try to highlight this in one of the fa other fact sheets that you don't necessarily need a science background either. There are so many natural resource positions available across all agencies and organizations that are needed, the things like HR specialists and IT and computer experts, um, accountants. One that I see a ton come across, in particular with government job announcements, is a realty specialist. And that's because the government owns a lot of land, so they know, need to have somebody that knows how to purchase land and sell land and knows that information and the law regarding that. So again, this fact sheet is really there to help people broaden their view about what a natural resource career really is. The guide also does a more detailed spotlight on a few different careers. And we tried to choose careers that were one, either in high demand, like a water treatment technician, or two, just um, showcased the the variety of jobs in terms of educational background or work environment. 
So for example, water treatment technician is one that we chose to highlight. Um, Denver Water a couple years ago told me that um, between 2015 and 2018, about 50% of their personnel was gonna be retirement eligible. And so in particular, you know, that's concerning. We can't have half of Denver Water leave. We need people to fill those positions today. And um, so that was an important one to highlight. Um, so for each, we talk about a little bit about the career, what a day on the job looks like. Then we go into some of the skills that you would need for that and some of the personal attributes. So for example, with the water treatment technician, um, you need to be able to have flexibility in your schedule because some of the work is shift work or on weekends or at nights. Um, also, you have to be really good at math and analytical skills and really detail oriented. Also, this position would work mostly indoors and mostly by themselves. So those are all just things to consider when looking at yourself in a particular job. And then of course we include salary and education and all that stuff as well. Um, so there is, I forget how many, maybe mm, seven or eight of these in, uh, in the guide. Another resource that might be helpful depending on the age of your, the youth you're working with is a table of all of the natural resource degree programs in Colorado and the specific degrees that they offer. So we went through all of these websites and we've updated this numerous times. Um, so someone can see, well, I live on the West Slope. What's some degree programs that are around me? Or maybe I wanna work in water quality management. So what are the four or five schools that offer a degree in that. And so we tried to make it easy for them to find uh, a, a place where they could get uh, higher education in the field that they were looking for. So next we talk a little bit about who hires. So I think some of the obvious government, federal government agencies, um, of course the Forest Service, the National Park Service, USGS, but there's also a lot of the less obvious ones. Um, for example, the Department of Defense and the Army Corps of Engineers, they hire a lot of biologists and environmental engineers. Um, so we wanna make students aware that their dream job might not be at the National Park Service, for example. And then we also talk, again, a, a lot about the state agencies here in Colorado in particular. And we do a profile on all of the state natural resource agencies. And the one I wanted to highlight today um, from the guide is the Department of Agriculture. And um, for each of these, we go into the mission, a little bit about the agency, office locations, types of jobs. Um, but where I think, what I think is the um, most impactful is this box about what staff think is unique about the Department of Ag. And we went out and actually interviewed HR staff from all of these, from many of these, um, these agencies. And so we asked them, you know, what is unique about your agency and what are you looking for in a candidate? And what might they not know that we can share with them? And so for example, with the Department of Colorado Department of Agriculture, they said they have a real strong affiliation with the Cattlemen's Association and other producers, which makes sense, but I hadn't really thought about it before. So, you know, you're actually, someone in that job might spend a lot of their time talking with ranchers. Um, so that's something, you know, a skill that they might not, might want to think about. Um, they're also, while they're highly regulatory, they try to work with people through a cooperative basis and through education first. And they do a lot of agriculture education to youth and adults. Um, again, I didn't know that. So that's helpful to know. Um, they also hire a lot of seasonal jobs. And those seasonal jobs tend to be a little bit less competitive than those at Colorado Parks and Wildlife, for example. And so if you have somebody that wants to start down a pathway in natural resource career, um, they might look at a seasonal job with the Department of Ag to start building their resume. That might be a, a slightly easier way to start um, getting some items put on their resume. Or they might just really like Ag. That could be the case too. Um, 
At the very back of the guide, we have a directory of the agencies and field offices in Colorado that relate to natural resources. And this always um, surprises me. We, I think this table is five pages long. I just can't believe how many offices we have in Colorado that relate to natural resources. Um, so again, when I'm talking with youth, I give them this information. We highlight the, the places that are near them. And, um, and a lot of these locations have said, if someone's interested in working here, come into the office, get a feel for what it's like, meet some of the people. Um, because even though a lot of these agencies do similar things, they have very different cultures. Um, for example, like the department, the Colorado Department of um, Public Health and Environment is very scientific and it's, it has just a very different feeling than the Department of Agriculture, for example. And so I think it's important if, if someone's interested in working for one of these agencies um, to go in and, and meet some of the people and just get a feel for it. But again, this is just a great way to see what's near them and what all of the opportunities are that we have here in Colorado. So beyond government jobs, um, the, again, the guide focuses heavily on government jobs, but today I wanted to, to step back a little bit and talk about some of the other places that, that hire, obviously private businesses. So a lot of those jobs are environmental engineers or foresters. Um, we have obviously a, a large outdoor industry, recreation industry here in Colorado that hires um, river guides and outfitters. Um, also, in Colorado, we have a ton of nonprofit organizations, all the way from a national, federal level, um, like the Nature Conservancy or the National Wildlife Federation, to the state level, um, to the local level. And again, they, they cross all different fields, from water to agriculture to working with kids to working on the land from Parks and Rec. So again, what, we, what I always try to get across when talking with youth is just no matter who they are, what their skills are, if they're interested in this field and, and making a difference, then, then there's some place that they can tap into. And then finally, they can be their own boss. So there's a lot of opportunities to be an entrepreneur in this field. Um, I've seen a lot of people have their own solar industries, solar project industries. I've seen people become green space designers or sustainable event planning is a big one here in Colorado. Uh, this is a picture of Beverly Grant, one of our former board members, and she saw a deficit of um, healthy food in her neighborhood. And so she started a farmer's market and uh, did a really great job. And so there's a lot of opportunities for youth to identify a problem or an issue that they feel passionate about. And, um, and to pursue that. Okay, so that kind of wraps up the what jobs are out there, where to look for jobs. So let's jump into kind of the nitty gritty of, of some of the important tips of searching and applying for positions. And again, this is gonna focus more on government jobs, but some of the information is, is applicable beyond that. So hang with me here. Uh, for federal jobs, if you're not familiar, they use USA Jobs, which is a website, an online portal, basically for the majority of federal jobs. And I've used this myself and know what a uh, intimidating process and um, kind of a black hole it, it seems to be. So we really try throughout the guide to go step by step, break down USA Jobs so that anybody can understand and be successful at using it. Because I think a lot of people aren't successful because they don't understand the language or how to apply, and they might be a great candidate, but if they're missing that information, that's, that's one big issue. So that's what, one of the barriers that we're trying to combat with talking about USA Jobs. Um, so USA Jobs just got a new look and a bunch of new features in the last six months. So we're constantly keeping up with them in terms of screenshots and information. Um, but, but we go through the guide, we, we talk about how to create, uh, log in, uh, how to search for positions, 
And one of the things that I've learned through this process and, and in helping to write this guide is that you can search by an occupational series. And a series is a four digit code, again, because it's the government, you need a code, right? Um, so for example, park rangers are 0025 across any department and agency. And so for each of those codes, there are specific education and experience and qualification requirements for that series. And there is a link to those in the guide. So someone can go to that website and see what series they are qualified for and then search on that series versus kind of coming up with a hundred jobs and kind of one by one saying, oh no, not qualified, not qualified, not qualified. You can narrow it down a bit right from the get go. Um, so that's something I just learned in the last year that I thought was very helpful to pass along. Um, you can also fil filter your search results. And again, we go into a lot more detail throughout the guide into how to do that. We also spend pages on understanding the position listing because again, some of the language can be new to someone that's not never dealt with the federal government. For example, the pay scale and grade, this GS0507. We talk about what does that mean and how do you know, again, if you're qualified. Uh, we have a lot of youth that, that just don't know um, the realities of, of what they're qualified for and what salary they might expect and that sort of thing. And so those are all things that we try to describe pretty in depth in, throughout the guide. And then again, understanding the duties and requirements section, which are the most important of the position listing, the qualifications section. I just attended a USA Jobs webinar and they basically told their audience that um, each one of those phrases separated by the, the semicolon there, if you can see that, needs to be highlighted on your resume very specifically and in the same keywords that are used in the position listing. So again, this is just information that, that you wouldn't think of um, if you weren't um, in the federal government or didn't have experience with that. And then again, how to apply for a job. Applying for a federal job is completely different than applying for a private or a nonprofit job. First of all, the federal resume is typically five to six or even 10 or more pages long, simply because of what I just said. You need to document every single qualification and how you meet that uh, very detail in detail. Um, second, you need supporting documents. Right off the bat, if you're going to use education as qualification, you're going to need a college transcript. And you might need a, a proof of military service, um, those sorts of things. And then the third part of applying for a job is this occupational questionnaire. And this is a key, key part of the application. It asks you to rank yourself on a number of different skills related to the job qualifications. And one thing that I was not aware of is that if you rate yourself high on a skill, let's say that you've used um, telemetry, for example, and tracking animals. I, I've done that in my career, so I would say, yeah, I've done that. But I wouldn't necessarily think to specifically state that in my resume. And so that's the type of thing that you need to be, be very attentive to, is, is anything you rate yourself high on the occupational questionnaire needs to be specific in your resume, because they'll cross-reference that. And if they don't see it, that's means for disqualifying you. So again, we want to make sure that our youth are not disqualified for any reason, um, for any technical reasons. The federal job hiring timeline is also a little longer than um, normal. I think they're trying to get down to about a 80 day hiring. And um, again, that's different. If you're looking for a job that uh, in the next couple weeks or a month, maybe looking at a federal job might not be for you. But again, just to, to know what to expect going in if you're going to apply to a job through a USA Jobs. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about USA Jobs today is just because a lot of the seasonal jobs across the agencies are being posted right now. They're posted and there's a lot of opportunity 
because of that. Um, and so I want to make sure if your youth are interested in using USA Jobs to get a seasonal position that, that they get help right now so they can apply for those jobs now. And then finally, how to stand out and be a successful candidate. And again, these are things that we learned from our interviews with the HR personnel is to really ask yourself before you put all that time and effort to apply, are you really qualified? Because if you don't meet the qualifications, maybe move on to a different job uh, position announcement. The resume, and I think this goes across, um, across the board, is you want to tailor your resume to the job opening. Specifically for USA Jobs, they have something called a resume builder, which is something we recommend using just because, again, you'll it'll prompt you to put in all of that information that, that is needed for the hiring manager to review your application. And then again, just tips on the occupational questionnaire, how to give yourself the most credit while still being honest. And then we go a little bit into networking, um, which again is applicable far beyond USA Jobs. So the next section of the guide talks more about state jobs. And we put together this table of all of the agencies, the natural resource agencies in Colorado, the types of positions they hire, how to find the positions, how to apply, whether it's an online application process or um, an email application process, and some of the application materials that they might expect to need to submit. And one that I wanted to highlight is the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Youth Internship Program. And again, you might be familiar with this already, um, but they just came out with a formal program a couple years ago and they um, got, I believe it was a million dollars of GoCo funding to fund this program to try to get more youth interested in natural resource careers. And so all CPW staff are encouraged to apply and to go beyond the typical definition of an intern, you know, maybe getting coffee or doing paperwork. They wanted them to have awesome experiences. And, um, out there in the field doing really cool stuff and I've heard just great things about that and so I know that spring again is the hiring timeline for a lot of these internships um, so I would encourage your youth to to look into that program as well if they're ready for that and again throughout the guide we um, have a lot of screenshots and information just about you know how do you navigate the state application process because it's kind of similar to USA Jobs on a, on a much smaller scale. But again, there's different uh, headings and, and codes and this and that that we try to break down and, and make a little bit more digestible for the average person. Just a couple more resources on where to look for jobs um, if they're looking for a job right now. Um, first of all is our own listserv. Uh, and I, we have a jobs blog as well, but um, our listserv is a lot geared towards environmental education jobs, as you might expect, um, but it also just gets a ton of interesting job posts. I would say maybe three to five job postings I see every week come across our listserv, and you might get other things like workshop announcements or resource this and that. Um, but it would be a good one if they wanted uh, to think about a job in, in an environmental education or outdoor field. The COSA or the Colorado Open Space Alliance listserv would be more if they're looking for a land management agency job. Again, I, I see probably the same, maybe three to five jobs come across the COSA listserv um, every week. And those are from, let's say, Jefferson County Open Space or Arapahoe Open Space or Eagle County. Um, so across Colorado. And again, I think it's just a cool way if you're interested that, to engage in that community because you'll see, like the other day, I saw something come across with like parking lot something. And it just makes you think about things that that professional would need to think about. And um, again, in the follow email, I'm going to send up send out, I will have information on how to join these listservs if you're interested. 
Okay, the last thing I want to mention today is a training toolkit. And this is something we put together uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, at that time, the career guide, I should say, was originally drafted in 2014 and has undergone several revisions since then. And in the last four years, we've taken in it mostly to youth cores, a few other places, but mostly youth cores, and we've presented this material to the youth cores using a PowerPoint presentation and some activities. But we know that we just don't have the capacity to go out and train youth all around Colorado, which is really what our goal is, is to get this out widespread throughout Colorado. And um, so we put together a training toolkit, which includes, um, over here you'll see uh, training outlines and presentations, about 10 different activities, a number of handouts, some of which you'll get today, uh, evaluation and reference materials. And so, so far we've held two train the trainer events. And our goal in these train the trainers is to train professionals, career influencers like yourselves in using the career guide with their youth, a little bit more in depth than the webinar I'm doing today. It's usually a full day training where we go through the guide, we go through some activities, we usually have a panel on something related to natural resource careers, and then our participants walk out with a bag of five hard copy guides, hard copy of a lot of the resources, and then access to this online shared folder where they can access all of this information. Um, and so in the upper left, you'll see this is a photo from our Denver Train the Trainer back in fall of 2016. We had about 65 people at that. And then we did one in Grand Junction in last fall with about a little over 30 people. And this year, we're hoping to do one in Colorado Springs in the fall as well. So um, if you're interested in that, definitely let me know. Reach out and I'll put you on the, the careers in natural resource initiative list so you can make sure that you have all the information on that. But um, since we have a few minutes left, I wanna just share one of the activities that's in the guide or that's in the toolkit so that you can get an idea of um, what we can provide to accompany the guide. And um, so this is a career scavenger hunt or a career guide scavenger hunt. And for all of the activities, we've put together a facilitator summary and instruction sheet, an answer key and participant worksheets. And um, so, and again, for each of them, we have a summary of the, the activity, what the goals are, how much time you might need, uh, because a lot of these, you know, we give you 10 choices of activities and that's where you can kind of piece it together depending on how much time you have, what your audience looks like. Um, and then again, it tells you what materials and instructions you'll need. Uh, so for this one, um, this is just to get your participants to open the career guide and to look inside of it. Because we know if we give somebody a big book like this, it's gonna go in a file cabinet or on a, on a shelf. But if we help them open it up and page through some of the resources that they're more likely to use it and to continue um, to look and see what other resources are contained within it. So that's our whole goal of this activity is just to get them to open up the, the career guide. And so we break it down. Um, I think there's six, section, six sections of questions and um, they can do this in pairs or individually. Again, depending on the time you have in your group, it's, it's completely flexible. Um, and our, again, our goal isn't for them to go hunting for this information. We give them the page number right there. It's just to have them start reading the guide and, and thinking about some of the resources in it and how that can be helpful to them. And um, so again, this is just one example of one of the activities that we have in the toolkit. Okay, finally, um, you know, what now? So I've done a lot of talking in the last hour um, and gone over a lot of things. 
So I will make sure that you receive through email, um, of course, the guide URL. Again, it mostly lives online, so you are help, welcome to download that. Uh, the handouts that we went over today, including the activity that I just described, um, the webinar evaluation, which I mentioned before. And then again, we've got that upcoming Train the Trainer workshop, hopefully happening in Colorado Springs in the fall. Um, if you want more information on that or just to be on the list, definitely let me know. And then, um, you know, we also, we just want you to, to use these resources, to get them out, to connect with one another. This is not an issue that any one organization or individual or group can, can tackle alone. And so our goal is to provide some resources and some connections that can really help, help us all connect youth with those natural resource positions. Um, so with that, I'll take a breath and uh, see if anyone has any questions. Feel free to use the, the chat box and I'll give you a, a minute or two to chat any questions that you might have in. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions, but feel free to email me afterwards if, if you think of something. Um, again, I just really appreciate your time this afternoon, and um, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. I hope you continue to connect with us and that you found some of these resources helpful today. So have a great rest of the day, and um, I hope I will have a chance to talk with you again.